Hey there, welcome back, I'm John. It's late spring right now and I'm in the middle of an overgrown field and we're gonna see what we can see. But before we do that, uh, I just wanted to take a quick moment to uh, thank everybody for all of your support. Um, just recently hit 100 subscribers and 30,000 views on the channel and I'm truly humbled by the amount of support that I've received from my family and my friends and from viewers like you. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. We'll start our journey with ground ivy, Lacoma heteratia. It is a creeping perennial plant native to Europe and Asia. Easily recognizable by its scalloped leaves and bluish purple flowers, it is a member of the mint family and, not surprisingly, has a minty, earthy aroma when crushed. Blooming in early spring and remaining in bloom throughout the season, ground ivy is an important plant for spring pollinators such as bees and butterflies. Historically, ground ivy has been used for various purposes. In medieval times, it was used to clarify and flavor ale, earning it the nickname Ale Hoof. In addition, it has a long history of medicinal uses, treating ailments like coughs and colds. Even today, it is occasionally used in herbal teas and remedies. Though some people may experience digestive irritation from its consumption. Spreading quickly, it is considered an invasive weed in some areas, especially North America, where it can easily overtake lawns and garden beds. Despite its reputation as a weed, ground ivy can be appreciated for its resilience and beauty, as well as its long history of traditional medicine and brewing. Up next are these mysterious frothy patches which seem to appear overnight in meadows and fields. What are they? They are created by the nymphs of the aptly named spittlebug, small insects belonging to the family Cercophidae. These amazing insects create their homes by mixing air with a liquid secreted from their abdomen. The liquid, which is composed mainly of plant sap and is sticky to the touch, adheres to stems and leaves sheltering the young nymphs from predators while also keeping them moist. Widespread and diverse, there are over 23,000 species of spittlebug throughout the world. Adult spittlebugs, commonly known as frog hoppers, can leap up to 100 times their body length, an incredible feat relative to their size. Next is an iconic flower of spring, but did you know that it is considered an invasive weed in many areas? This is an oxeye daisy, Lucanthemum vulgare, and it is instantly recognizable by its white petals surrounding a central yellow disc. Native to Europe and Asia, oxeye daisy has been introduced in many other regions, including North America, Australia, and New Zealand, where it thrives in a variety of environments, including meadows, grasslands, and roadsides. Blooming in late spring to early summer, oxeye daisies produce flowers from May to September, depending on the region. Symbolizing innocence, purity, and simplicity, they are sometimes used in wedding bouquets or other ceremonial decorations, such as daisy chains, which are garlands made by linking together stems of daisies or other similar flowers. Additionally, oxide daisies have potential use in phytoremediation, which is the use of plants to remove contaminants from soil. This is red clover. Uh, every part of the plant is edible. Uh, the leaves, the stems, and the best part is the flower. Hmm. This one has a spittle bug on it. Don't eat that. It's a uh, Kind of got a flavor like raw green beans, but a little sweeter than that. They're very good. Red clover, Trifolium pretense, is a flowering plant in the Fabacea or legume family and is characterized by its trifoliate leaves and purple spherical flower heads. Left unchecked, they can grow quite tall, reaching heights of up to 30 inches, 80 centimeters. Native to Europe, Western Asia, and Northwest Africa, red clover has been naturalized in many other regions including North America, where it thrives in meadows, pastures, and along roadsides. Red clover is widely used as a forage crop for livestock, where it is valued for its high protein content. It also serves as a cover crop, improving soil fertility. Next, we have another type of clover. This one is white clover, Trifolium repens. Thriving in much of the same conditions as red clover, they are commonly found growing in lawns and meadows throughout the world. Experiencing a dormancy period during extreme heat or cold, white clover grows actively in the spring and autumn. And once established, they quickly spread, forming dense ground cover. Like most clovers, they possess the classic trifoliate leaf structure. 
with flowering heads that are white to brown in color and are smaller than those of the red clover, but are just as edible, both to humans and to livestock. Moving on from clovers, we have this invasive plant, meadow hawkweed, Hieratium cespitosum. A perennial herb native to Europe, meadow hawkweed has spread to North America, where it is considered a nuisance weed in many areas. The name hawkweed derives from the ancient belief that hawks consumed the plant to improve their vision. The genus name Hieratium comes from the Greek word hyrax, meaning hawk. They are easily identifiable by their bright yellow flower clusters atop tall, leafless, hairy stems. Reproducing both through seeds and through underground stems called rhizomes, they spread rapidly and can form dense mats, outcompeting native species and reducing biodiversity. This beautiful bloom belongs to the same family as meadow hawkweed, Asteraceae. This is brown knapweed, Centuria jacea, a herbaceous perennial plant that is a favorite among spring and summer pollinators. Brown knapweed is known for its striking purple blooms, which resemble thistle flowers, as well as its brown fringed bracts, which give it its common name. Despite its beauty and value to pollinators, it is considered an invasive weed in many areas, including North America. Each flower head can produce a very large number of seeds, which are small, light, and equipped with bristles to facilitate wind dispersal. And the seeds can remain viable in soil for many years, contributing to the plant's persistence and making control efforts challenging. Brown knapweed also exhibits allopathic properties, meaning it can release chemicals into the soil which inhibit the growth of surrounding plants, giving it a competitive advantage over native vegetation, further contributing to its invasive nature. You're probably familiar with our next flower. It's quite common and easily recognizable. This is the meadow buttercup, Ranunculus acris. Native to Europe and parts of Asia, it has been widely introduced to North America, where it thrives in both urban and rural environments. Their intensely yellow blooms gain their vibrant, glossy look from a layer of reflective cells on their petals. Blooming mainly in late spring to early summer, meadow buttercups brighten the meadows and fields where they bloom. Though as visually appealing as they are, Contact with metal buttercups can cause skin irritation in humans and animals, a condition known as buttercup rash. Buttercups are sometimes associated with butter and dairy, leading to myths about cows grazing on buttercup-filled fields. In reality, they can be toxic if ingested in large quantities by livestock. Culturally significant, metal buttercups have been featured in folklore and literature, often symbolizing childhood, innocence, and simplicity. Next, we have a plant named for a mythological hero. This is Achillea millifolium, or yarrow. According to Greek mythology, the legendary warrior Achilles used yarrow to treat his wounded soldiers. Indeed, yarrow has a long history of use in traditional medicine, where it is valued for its anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, and astringent properties. Even today, it is occasionally used as an herbal medicine, treating digestive issues and wounds, Growing up to three feet tall, yarrow has feathery, fern-like leaves and clusters of small white flowers. Some plants even display flowers with a pinkish hue. Native to the temperate regions of the northern hemisphere, yarrow is often found growing in meadows and grasslands, where it thrives, spreading rapidly, much to the delight of pollinators. Possessing an extensive and hardy root system, it is excellent at providing erosion control and soil stabilization. A versatile plant with a rich history, yarrow is a valuable addition to its ecosystem. Up next are these blooms that resemble miniature daisies. They are annual fleabane, Origeron annuus, and are indeed members of the Asteraceae family, which includes daisies. They are native to North America, but have spread throughout the world. In fact, in some regions, they have become quite invasive. As their name suggests, they are annuals, completing their entire life cycle in a single growing season. Favoring sunny meadows, annual fleabane grows quickly and can form dense stands. The name fleabane comes from the traditional belief that they repel fleas. However, there is little to no scientific evidence to support this. They are, however, quite popular with spring and summer pollinators. Next, on the outskirts of the meadow, we come across a clutch of speckled brown eggs. They belong to a very special bird. This is the killdeer, Caradrius vociferus, a medium-sized plover widely distributed in North and Central America. 
As you can see, they typically nest upon the open ground in a simple scrape, often lined with pebbles or other small objects. Killdeer typically lay between three and five eggs per clutch. The eggs are well camouflaged, blending in with their surroundings. During nesting season, the killdeer are always vigilant and defend their territory aggressively. When they feel that their nest is threatened, they feign injury, acting like their wing is broken, distracting potential predators and leading them away from their nests. I didn't want to bother this one any more than I already did by setting up my camera. Here we have a member of the legume family. This is bird vetch, Vichia cracka. Bird vetch is a climbing perennial plant with compound leaves and tendrils, which it uses to climb. Growing up to six feet tall, two meters, it often climbs over other plants and structures, forming dense mats. In late spring to midsummer, it flowers, producing beautiful purple blooms, which are extremely popular with pollinators. After blooming, bird vetch produces small pod-like fruits containing its seeds. Like other legumes, bird vetch forms symbiotic relationships with specific types of bacteria in its root system, which converts atmospheric nitrogen into a form usable by plants. The result is greatly enriched soil, benefiting itself as well as surrounding plants, making bird vetch a critical member of its ecosystem. Let's take a look at another member of the legume family now. This is bird's foot trefoil, Lotus corniculatus, a low-growing perennial plant. Thriving in meadows and pastures, its bright yellow blooms add their color to spring and summer scenes, as well as providing its abundant nectar to bees, butterflies, and other insects. After flowering, it produces seed pods that resemble a bird's foot or claw, giving it its common name. Bird's foot trefoil is valued as a forage crop for livestock, owing to its high nutritional value. Additionally, due to its dense growth habit, it is useful for erosion control. We'll end our journey with this small, delicate wildflower. This is Deptford Pink, Dianthus armeria, an annual plant featuring tiny, bright pink flowers which bloom from spring to fall. Native to Europe, it gets its common name from the Deptford area of England, where it was once commonly found. It has been introduced to North America, where it is now commonly found in most states and provinces. Though its blooms are tiny, they are still very popular with pollinators and are often visited by butterflies, making them ideal additions to wildflower gardens.